Hey guys, this is Anthony Morganti from OnlinePhotographyTraining.com. Welcome to my free training on On One Photo Raw 2019. In this episode, I'm going to demonstrate a couple of the common tools that we most often use in On One Photo Raw 2019. Now, it may feel like I'm really plodding along, but there really is a method to my madness. On One Photo Raw 2019 is really a feature-rich application. There's a lot of different tools and a lot of different functionality. And if I throw everything at you all at once, I think it would confuse you and you might give up on the program. So we're starting out relatively slow. We're going to gain momentum as we go. I'm starting out with the most common functions, something that most of us would do on almost every image. And as we get further on throughout this video series, we'll start working or start um, demonstrating uh, more advanced features of the application that allow you to do more advanced techniques to your images. Now, right now we're still starting, we're still with the basics. And I want to talk about a couple tools that we most often use. Now, in this image here, you can see I got these branches down here and often we have things in our image we'd like to remove, sensor spots, branches, a pimple, something like that. And there's a lot of different tools in on one that will allow you to do this. If you look over at the left hand tool well, you can see there's a little section called fix and there's a band-aid there. And if I click on that band-aid, you'll notice at the top now there's actually three tools in this section. Right now, the retouch brush tool is showing, and this is a good tool to use uh, to remove pimples, uh, sensor spots, even tree branches. Now, to the left of that, we have an eraser. The eraser tool, again, is good to just erase things like um, tree branches and whatnot. That works very well. You're going to find that the eraser tool, though, is a little slower than the healing brush. The healing brush, or the retouch brush, I should say, works a bit quicker. Now to the right of that, we have the clone stamp tool. So we could actually take pixels from one area, copy those and place them in another area. And that comes in very handy when you really need to remove something in the image. Now, to tell you the truth, to remove these branches, any of these three tools will work. I'm going to use the healing brush because that's probably the tool you're gonna to use the most often to remove sensor spots, dust spots, rain spots. Um, pimples and things like that and it will work very well on these branches now you notice when every any tool is active tool attributes are to the right and this will vary the tool attributes will vary from tool to tool you see the eraser tool just has size this gear is um, an option for if you're using a tablet so if you're using something like a Wacom tablet you could adjust the size of the brush by press the pressure of the pen on the tablet so that is what that gear is for. But we're not using that eraser. We're going to go to the healing brush. And you can see now we have size here. You could change the size with that slider. Also, if you just hover over the word size, you'll see that the cursor turns into that double arrow. That's called a scrubby slider. And what you would do there is you would click down with the left mouse button. You could go to the right to make the brush larger or left to make it smaller. You could do the same thing with feathering. You could uh, go over the word feather and that scrubby slider will appear and you could drag it with the left mouse button left or right. And there's a size uh, attribute for feathering there as well. You also could affect the size of the brush with the bracket keys. The right bracket key makes that brush larger, the left bracket key smaller. The opacity, most often you want to remove like a sensor spot totally, uh, but sometimes you might just want, maybe someone has a prominent mole and you don't want to remove the mole, you just maybe want to fade it a little bit. So you might want to bring opacity down in some situations. And again, we have that, deer, uh, that gear for a Wacom tablet. Now, I think what typically uh, a lot of people make a mistake is they get too big of a brush and they try to do too much at once. This, All three of these tools, specifically and particularly the brush tool or this, um, as they call it, retouch brush, works best if you, if you go in smaller chunks. So I'm going to get a brush so that center part of the circle is just a little bigger than, let's say, the branch. And I'm just going to paint over this branch like that. And you can see our little red overlay appears 
where I'm painting. And then when I let go of the left mouse button, it will take a second and you can see it got rid of it. So I could just go in, do all these little pieces. Now, like I mentioned, I think most people make the mistake. They'll try to do the whole swath of those branches all at once. And that often will not work as well. And we'll just do that. And then we'll come here and do this big one now. This is a larger si uh, size branch. But we'll do, see how it does. And that. And then this one in the corner. And there, it's gone. And, and really, when you look at it, you can't even tell that those were ever there. Now, if I was doing this and I'm not in the video, I would get rid of this side too. But I think you understand how this works. And similarly, uh, the eraser would work the same way. Uh, the eraser is a little slower, as I mentioned, and you would still affect the size the same ways. Uh, you could go right over size with the scrubby slider, click the drop down, or use the bracket keys. Um, then you would come in and just paint. And you could see that I think this one might be a little too close to this branch. And it samples the pixels near it. And you can see how it's taking a little longer. And it might be sampling some, see it did, it sampled some of these branches here. So you see it didn't really remove it, it just kind of redrew it. So sometimes one of these tools will work much better than a different tool. If you use the clone stamp tool, what you need to do, and, and again, we have size and feathering here and opacity. What you need to do here is you need to sample an area first. And to sample the area, an area, hold the Alt or Option key in. Alt if you have a PC, Option if you have a Mac. And I'm going to sample like right there. Now it's going to take these pixels and it's going to uh, copy them wherever I want them. And I'm going to go like right here and you can see how that got rid of the branch and sometimes it will take a second you can see that didn't do as good a job as the healing brush I think the healing brush in this instance worked better so that's how you use those three tools and those tools are most often used and the healing brush is most often used of those three so I'm not going to bother getting rid of these right now I want to go to uh, local adjustments you may notice over here we have the develop effects portrait local so you could go to local adjustments and what local adjustments are really two different tools, a brush and a gradient or a graduated filter. And you could access them by clicking right here on local, or you could go over here on the left hand tool well and right where it says local, right above it, above it, you'll see a brush. Click there and you'll see now automatically it turned the local on over here on the far right. And we have the two tools I mentioned, the brush, and then to the right of that, we have the adjustable gradient. Now, again, when you're on, the tool is active, you'll have the tool attributes. Now, what do you want to do? Do you want the tool to paint in these adjustments that you set over here? Or do you want it to paint out the adjustments? And what I'd like to do, I think the sky is a little brighter than the rest of the image, meaning the water, the reflection in the water and the trees are a little darker and I'd like to balance it a little bit and make the sky a little bit darker. So I'm going to paint in the adjustment. Also, we have the same size attributes and you could do adjust it the same way with the scrubby slider, the drop down slider, or the bracket keys, left bracket key, right bracket key. Same thing for feathering and opacity. And I'm going to keep it at opacity. Now there's a, that gear over here again, and that has a little more um, adjustments here if you're using a tablet. So, you know, I, I, that we'll get into maybe in, in the future, but for this video, I don't think you really have to concern yourself with that gear. Now to the left of that, there's something that's in on one called a perfect brush and you could toggle it on and off when you click that brush and you could see that it explains what the perfect brush is and what it really does. It automatically detects and protects edges. So wherever you click and start your brush stroke, it's going to attempt to keep whatever adjustment you're brushing in relegated to those same types of pixels so that it won't, in the case you could see in this little demonstration of the tree, it's tending to not affect the tree itself because it's being clicked on the sky. And it does often work very well. I don't think we need it in this instance, so I'm going to take it off. 
And when I mentioned I want to bring the exposure down of the sky. So I'm just going to start at the left and I'm just going to paint across the sky. And I could come back in. Now I'm going to readjust this so there's no, there's nothing to be too concerned about here if, if I, uh, if it looks like it's too dark or it's not dark enough or anything like that. So I kind of like the balance right off the bat. Now, where did I exactly paint? You could look at the overlay or the mask. And to do that, there's two different ways. You could go down here in the lower left-hand corner and you could see this little rectangle with circle on it. If you click on that, you'll get this black and white view of the mask. So you could see wherever the white is, is where I painted. And that means that adjustment is coming through on that spot. So you could see there with that exposure adjustment. Now, often uh, that kind of black white look, we don't like that, or maybe we, it doesn't look as good or something. And you could change that. If you go up here to mask and go down to the view mode, you could see there's grayscale. That's what we just saw, but there's also red overlay. So if I click on that, then I go back down here and click on this um, circle. You could see that we have this red overlay. So it kind of gives us um, maybe a better view because the red overlay is oh, um, trans translucent. Is that right? Yeah, we could see through it a little bit and see uh, the, um, in this case, the water and the building and trees behind it. So sometimes that works a little better. You also could turn the mask on and off right here where it says show mask. And you could see that there's a keyboard shortcut right there as well. So I could come in, I'm gonna bring exposure down a touch. Uh, let's see, highlights. I've noticed with the brush and the gradient filter that the highlights don't do a lot or the, the shadows tend to not do as much. Let's bring structure up a little bit though. Let's kind of really make those clouds pop. So you could do any of these adjustments now uh, with this local adjustment, the brush. And um, I think that looks pretty good there. Now I could turn it off and on. There's before and there's after. Now, if you think you didn't cut it in very well, like uh, you could bring the brush smaller and you could come down in here and, and try to bring it in a little better. You could turn on the, the um, perfect brush, click there. And then you could kind of click right over where the sky is. And it, hopefully it'll just affect the sky and not affect the trees. And this helps you grab that edge a little better. And you won't get as much haloing uh, around the darker edges of those trees. So that lets you kind of get really get that adjustment in there where you want it and not affect anything else. So I think right in here, there. Yeah, I think that looks pretty good. So those are probably the three or the two most common tools you know, the uh, healing brush and the actual just brush. Also, in that those same tool wells we have, in this case, in the local adjustments, we have this adjustable gradient. Now, adjustable gradient, if I wanted to do one of those, I would just click on that tool. And you can see there's the attributes for the gradient. And I think I'm going to go into more detail in a future video on the gradient because gradients come in really handy. And you can see that the cursor turns into the gradient tool there and or the a gradient bug i think they call that and you could just click anywhere on your uh, image and lay it down so if i want to lay it down right there i just click and then you could see the gradient and the transition zones are between the dotted lines so anything above is getting the adjustment and then you could see it will generally start to fade away as it goes through the transition zone till down here it's not being applied at all so the gradients, again, they come in really handy. And I could have used a gradient on this, but I thought the brush would work more effectively um, for this specific uh, adjustment that I was talking about. Now, if I want to get rid of that, you know, just click there. And now I'm back to where I started. So I could hit Command Z and kind of back my way out of these things. There we go. And then I think I backed out one too many. So I could go up to Edit and then to Redo there that's a little better so there is our brush adjustment that we had done you can see the brush is still active up there so again some very common uh, tools that uh, you'll find that you might use on almost every image in, when you're working 
um, with On One Photo Raw 2019. Um, in our next episode, I'm going to, I'm trying to do this too in a flow of the way you'd actually work on an image. Um, so in our next episode, I think we'll start touching on some of the things you could do in effects and we'll introduce some more tools along the way in the next several videos. Thank you for watching my free video training on On One Photo Raw 2019. Please do me a favor and like and share this video. Also, subscribe to my YouTube channel. And in the description below this video, you'll see ways that you could help me keep making free photography how-to videos. Finally, visit my website, onlinephotographytraining.com. There, you'll find over 900 videos and articles to help you with your photography. And of course, they're all free. Thank you.